Greetings to you in the sweet name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ on behalf of JTK TV. Today's Bible verse is taken from 2 Timothy chapter 1 verse 7. For God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Let us pray. God Almighty, we thank you for your word. We thank you, God, because you have given us a powerful mind, a loving mind, a sound mind, and not a fearful mind. I pray, Master God, that those of us who are in fear would be delivered from fear. Let us be delivered from anxiety. Let us be courageous. Let us be bold. Let us be filled with love, Father God. Deliver us from all kinds of fear and negative emotions and help us, Master God, to be filled with goodness, to be filled with love, to be filled with adoration for life, for life that you have abundantly given unto us. Fill our hearts with faith and hope because faith and hope in you gives us all this goodness. We receive everything through you by trusting in you. Fill our hearts with trust and faith. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Second Timothy chapter 1 verse 7 For God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. God has given us a mind, says the word of God. We need to first understand that the mind is given by God. Many of us are suffering from the tortures of the mind. The mind seems to be a battlefield. It is torturing us many a time. Sometimes the mind is so calm and that is very rare. But often the mind is filled with questions. The mind is filled with fear. The mind is filled with anxiety. The mind is filled with jealousy. Mind is filled with grief and disappointment. The mind is filled with anger. The mind is filled with bitterness. The mind is filled with unsatisfaction and what more? Name it. And we have experienced it in our mind. But God did not give us that kind of a mind. The word of God says that he did not give us a mind of fear. He has given us a mind. And that mind is a sound mind. It is a loving mind. It is a believing mind. Mind filled with all kinds of goodness. But then... Why am I suffering with this mind, a chattering mind, a grumbling mind, a murmuring mind? The mind seems to be active all the time. Sometimes we are irritated with our own minds. But that is not the will of God for us. We are often to be reminded of what is the will of God for us. We need to be often reminded that hating people is not the will of God for our mind. We need to be often reminded that living in fear is not the will of God for us. We need to be often reminded. God, our great God, is involved with our minds. We need to be often reminded of that. Of course, we know that he is involved with our outer lives. We know that the circumstances that we meet are ordered by the Lord because the steps of the righteous man are ordered by God, says the word of God. 
So therefore we know that these circumstances that we come across is the will of God. We know that all the things work together for good for them that love God and who are called according to his purpose. This is his promise as written in Romans chapter 8 verse 28. We know that all things work good for us. We know that these outward circumstances are good for us. We know that the people whom we meet is ordered by the Lord. We know that the disappointments that we face is according to the will of God. We know that it was all for our good. Even the things that we did not receive, even the things that disappointed us was for our good, we know. But we need to be convinced that not just the circumstances and the physical things that we see, but even our minds are in the hands of God. He has given us a mind, like he has given us a life, like he has given us glory, like he has saved us, like he is leading us in the path of everlasting life. He is involved with our minds also and he has a plan for our minds also. He wants our minds to function in a particular way. He wants us to live in love. He wants us to live in power and he wants us to possess a sound mind. Rare words we think. Many of us have not experienced that kind of a calm mind. The psalmist says in Psalm chapter 23 that the Lord leadeth us beside the still waters. What does it mean? Does it just mean that our outward lives would be lives of still waters? Not just the outer lives. Our minds can be minds that resemble the still waters. We want to be led by those still waters. We want that calm mind. We want that sound mind, don't we? What are the characteristics of a sound mind? Many of us do not even know the characteristics of a sound mind. What it is like? What is the experience like? Many of us would be wondering. It is not just a temporary calmness that we are talking about. That sometimes even the world could give. Beautiful music, a calm music gives a calm feeling to the mind. But that is a temporary feeling and we are not talking about a temporary feeling. Sometimes a good rest or a holiday gives us a calm mind. But that too is temporary and we are not talking about these temporary experiences. We have all experienced a temporary calm state of mind. Even those who do not believe in God might have experienced a very short period of a calm mind. But that's not what we are talking about. We are talking about a permanent state, a calm state of mind, a calm attitude itself, a calm mind itself. That's what we are talking about. How is the experience? Many people have experienced, probably the psalmist experienced. That's why he has specified that the Lord leadeth us beside still waters. The world cannot lead us beside still waters. The world cannot give us that permanent state of mind. The world is not capable, the flesh is not capable of giving us that kind of a calm state of mind. It is not capable of giving us a sound mind. The world is not capable. The flesh is not capable. Therefore, all our work and labor towards attaining a calm mind, all these procedures that the world is teaching us in order to attain a calm mind is all in vain. It could after much labor, give a temporary state of mind but not a permanent sound mind which God alone can give. Therefore, we receive by faith. It is a wonderful state of mind which people have experienced 
as we see in the word of God. And many people would relate to what we are discussing here. They would say that they experienced. Many people would say that they are living in this kind of an experience. Great blessing it is. Great testimony it is. Wonderful glory it is. God has given us that kind of a mind. And what are the characteristics? A man who possesses a sound mind would not be moved. We are moved, aren't we? By such trivial circumstances in life. We are shaken, aren't we? By such trivial happenings in life. We are constantly afraid if our circumstances would change. We are constantly afraid if unpleasant circumstances would happen in our lives. We are constantly living in fear, aren't we? Sometimes it might not be the big fears. There are some small fears which we are accustomed to. We think and we are convinced that it is part of human life. But even trivial fears are not the will of God for the mind of a Christian. A sound mind is a very calm mind. It is not moved by the ups and downs of human feelings or emotions. It is not moved by the circumstances. It is not moved by the likes and dislikes which we do possess as human beings. It is not moved by criticism or gossip. It is not moved by flattery or praise. We can't receive flattery and praise, but we are not moved by it. We do receive criticism, gossip and bitter words, which is so common and so natural for a human life, but we are not moved by it. The reaction is the same for a sound mind. This is a characteristic of a sound mind. The sound mind is not moved by the news that it hears. The sound mind is not moved by the losses that it faces. It is not moved by the bitter looks or bitter words of people. It is not moved by the beautiful, wonderful words too. That is the characteristic of a sound mind. The fears might come. The pains might come. The sorrows might come. The bitterness of human life might try to attack a sound mind. But the sound mind watches it without any movement. This is the characteristic of a sound mind. Look at the life of the Lord Jesus Christ. Look at his eyes. Look at his life. Look at his experiences. Look at his reactions. He is the perfect example of a sound mind. His mind is a perfect example. He was not moved when he was betrayed by his disciples. He was not moved by all the pain that was right in front of him. That is the characteristic of a sound mind. He was not moved by the physical pain. He was not moved by the emotional pain. He saw it all. He felt it all. Pain attacked him. Words attacked him. Circumstances attacked him. People attacked him. Loved ones attacked him. Shame attacked him. What more? He felt all of it. 
because he was perfectly human as the word of God says. We do believe that he came as a human being with all the feelings, with all the emotions, with all the pain, with all the grief. He experienced all of it, but he was not moved. We see that in his eyes, that he was a man of a sound mind. And of course, he was praised. He was called the teacher. He was called the master. He was loved also. He was praised. He did great miracles, which no one did. He rose people from the dead. Miracles happened. Many lives were changed. He was adored, of course. But even by those positive things that happened, the Lord was not moved. Such is the characteristic of a sound mind. God has given this mind, the mind of the Son of God, to all his people. This is the characteristic of a sound mind. Look at the Lord Jesus Christ. In order to understand what a sound mind means, look at his life, look at his reactions, look at his walk, look at his talk. In order to see that one person who possessed a sound mind, he was not filled with fear. The circumstances that were right in front of him would fill us with so much of fear, with so much of anxiety. But he was courageous. Such is a characteristic of a sound mind. His heart was filled with courage. His mind was filled with courage. His heart and mind was filled with love. Therefore, even on the cross, he says, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Such is a calm state of mind. The love of the heart is not moved. He is so loving that that love is not moved. Love brings boldness. Have we realized that? When we analyze the reasons for fear, we would confess that bitterness and hatred does bring fear into our hearts. We would confess that. When we examine our hearts, we will confess that that person who is the cause for hatred in our hearts or unforgiveness in our hearts is making us afraid. Aren't we afraid of those people we hate? We are afraid to see them. We are afraid to hear from them. We are afraid of every kind of contact. We would say that we do not fear, but we are afraid of those we hate. We are afraid of circumstances that we hate. We are afraid of things that we hate. Hatred brings fear into our hearts. Therefore, it is written that God has given us a heart of love because a heart that loves is a heart that is courageous. A heart that hates is a heart that is filled with fear because what we hate brings fear into our hearts. Therefore, we ought to be very careful to not hate anybody in our lives, to not dislike anybody in our lives. We ought to be very careful to not loathe any kind of circumstances in our lives. We ought to be ready to include any kind of people into our lives or any kind of circumstances into our lives. That is a bold heart. The Lord Jesus Christ was open unto Every man who was in his life, he did not close himself to anybody. He was open. He did not hate anybody as we know. Therefore, he was filled with so much of courage. So, we ought to possess a loving mind in order to have a calm mind. And God has given us that kind of a loving mind. Let us just look unto him and believe in faith that he will fill us with love. He has given us that kind of a mind. That's what the word of God says. For God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love 
and our sound mind. Therefore, we need not be afraid. Therefore, we need not try and labor to now possess a heart of love. Because God gives unto us, receive by faith. Receive this kind of mind by faith from God himself. Let us just wait in order to possess such a mind. It's a mind of power. When we possess a loving mind, a sound mind, a calm mind, a still mind, it becomes a mind of power. The Lord Jesus Christ is the perfect example of a mind of power. As we all know, he saw what he thought. He saw what he said. His thoughts were filled with power. His words were filled with power. Miracles happened at his look. Miracles happened at his thought. Miracles happened at his word. Such is the mind of power and God has given unto us also this kind of a mind. Be not conformed to the world. Look unto the Lord in faith. Let us be very careful to first understand that this is the kind of mind that we possess. We are living such powerless lives. Because we do not possess the kind of mind that God has given unto us. We are filled with fear. And that's such a hindrance. We are filled with anxiety. We have a chattering mind that keeps talking all the time. That keeps talking unnecessary stuff all the time. It is never still. It is never calm. Therefore, this mind is unable to operate in the kind of power that God has given unto us. Let us repent. Let us look unto the Lord in faith. Let us wait upon the Lord. Then we shall renew our strength as eagles, as the word of God says. Such is the strong life we are called unto. Such is the powerful life that we are called unto. Our mind has been the hindrance all the while. Let us examine ourselves. Let us believe the Lord that he would help us overcome all kind of fear in our lives. We do possess a mind of power, a mind of love, and a sound mind. Let us operate in the sound mind that God has given unto us, in the loving mind. And then our thoughts shall be powerful. Our words shall be powerful because the Son of God has made us also the sons of God. We do possess the same power that the Lord Jesus Christ possessed because he, the begotten son, has included us in the inheritance. We are called into the inheritance as the sons of God. Let us possess what we are called to possess. Let us overcome all kind of fear, all kind of hindrance that is keeping us from possessing a powerful mind and a powerful life. Let us pray. God Almighty, we thank you for your word. We thank you for the knowledge and the wisdom that your word gives unto us. Help us, Master God, to understand the kind of power that you have given unto your people and help us to receive that kind of power by faith. We receive God by faith. We come unto you to receive because we can receive from nowhere else. Fill us with a heart of love. Fill us with a mind of power. Give us a sound, calm, clear, courageous mind. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.